Greetings everyone, welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at part two of our ancient Egyptian inventions, which focuses on technology and having a stable food supply. Uh, those are going to be the two main characteristics of civilization that are represented in this episode as well. If you are enjoying these episodes, please make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I put out a new lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you put those in the comment section below throughout the video, and I will make sure to get to them as soon as I can. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon as History with Audrey D as well. Let's go ahead and get into our lesson on part two of Ancient Egyptian Inventions. Before we get started, we need to look at our standard, our learning goal, and our learning target for today's lesson as well. Now our standard is again going to be standard two to describe the emergence of early civilizations. And our learning goal for today is going to be to summarize important achievements of Egyptian civilization. Now, our learning target for today is going to be describe agriculture, calendar, pyramids, art and architecture, hieroglyphic writing, record keeping, literature, such as the Book of the Dead and mummification. Now, another learning target that we're going to be focusing on today is to identify the seven characteristics of civilization. Our focus for today is going to be the agricultural technology that helped support Egypt's stable food supply. The terms or the inventions and technology that we're going to be looking at today include agriculture, the ox drawn plow, irrigation, the sickle, and the shadoof. So first up, let's talk about agriculture for a little bit in order to refresh our memories on what that really is. If you'd like more information on agriculture, you can also check out my Paleolithic to Neolithic era videos that talk about the dawn of agriculture and the transitions from Paleolithic era to the Neolithic era of agricultural revolution. Egyptian agriculture included irrigation technologies. Agriculture, as we discussed in our seven characteristics of civilization video, is part of the characteristic for a stable food supply. Agriculture itself is the science, art, or practice of cultivating the soil, producing crops, and raising livestock. Ancient Egyptians grew several different crops that were staples in their diet. Many of the crops were cereals or grains, which included barley, einkorn wheat, and emmer wheat. These wheat varieties were used to make breads. Some advertising for these breads included now with less sand. This is because sand in your food was actually a big issue in ancient Egypt and is partly why Egyptians had so many dental issues. New tools invented to help in agricultural production included the ox-drawn plow, irrigation, the sickle, and the shadoof. The ox-drawn plow revolutionized agriculture by increasing the amount of work that could be done each day. This invention allowed for fewer man hours and was a labor-saving technology. The plows made it possible for the dry soil to be broken up and seeded much faster. Along with this invention, the ancient Egyptians developed their own form of irrigation. They used a type of water management called basin irrigation. Basin irrigation utilized the natural rise and fall of the water levels in the river. Egyptians built a network of berms or earthen banks, both parallel and perpendicular to the river. These formed several different sizes of basins. Floodwaters would be directed to the fields and let sit for roughly one month so the silt could settle and the waters would absorb with the silt into the farmlands. These lands would then be drained and crops planted. The drained water would go to a basin or canal that needed water as well. 
Egyptians also built a system of canals to irrigate their crops after the floodwaters would have naturally receded. These canals had floodgates to control the amount of water released to the crops. These canals also assisted in holding water in the event of a drought. As discussed in our part one episode of Ancient Egyptian Inventions, the Egyptians created geometry. Now, geometry wasn't just used for calculations on building projects. It was also used by farmers. So when the floods washed away their boundary markers for their lands, farmers would use geometry to recalculate where fields began and ended. The sickle was used as a harvesting tool. The sickle is also known as a bagging or reaping hook. It is a single-handed instrument or tool. The sickle was used as a harvesting tool. The sickle is also known as a bagging or reaping hook. It is a single-handed instrument or tool designed with a curved blade and was usually used for harvesting grain crops. Also, for cutting foliage used to feed livestock. And our last invention that has to do with agriculture is the shadoof. A shadoof was another invention to move water. This one was a hand-operated device for lifting water. This device is actually still used today in countries such as India and Egypt. Now, as we can see in this image, a shadoof is made with a long pole that tapers toward the end, and it's almost horizontal in its position. It's mounted similar to a seesaw. A bucket is a bucket is hung on a rope and lowered into the water using a counterweight to pull the full bucket of water back up. Now these would have been used for bringing water back into homes as well as potentially watering crops for various reasons or taking water to livestock. And that is it for today's lesson on part two of our ancient Egyptian inventions. I hope this helps you have a better understanding of how agriculture and inventions actually played a role in the success of ancient Egypt. Uh, if you did enjoy this lesson, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon as History with Audrey D. Uh, if you have any questions, please make sure you put those questions or suggestions for future history videos down in the comment section below, and I will make sure to get to those as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you in our next lesson.